Hello and welcome back to Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby and today I will be taking you through a game from the Tata Steel's Masters Tournament, but however, this one is not from this year. In fact, it is from 2013. Uh, and this is a game played by the former world champion of Swanathon Anans against Levon Aronian, another world-class player. Uh, and this is a, a pretty famous game. In fact, it's been called Anans Immortal Game. And I think the reason for that will become pretty evident once we start going through some of these moves. So the game was played uh, after d4, d5. We see c4, c6, uh, a Slav, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3. And after e6, we arrive at the semi-Slav. Uh, e3 is white's choice in this game. Knight bd7, bishop d3. Now that white has committed to developing this bishop, we can take on c4, kind of force him to base a tempo, recapturing this pawn. Uh, black expands very quickly on the queen side with b5, bishop d3, and now bishop d6, castles, castles, and this is pretty well known theory, queen c2, bishop b7 is another point to this b5 move, clearing this space for the bishop. a3, white looking to stop any b4 advances, and now rook c8, for black. And here, white plays a move, uh, knight g5. And this is a pretty interesting move here. Uh, I think it was a pretty uh, new move at, at the time of the game. It's been tried a few more times since then. And the point of knight g5 is pretty obvious. We're attacking this h pawn. And now there's a couple ways that, uh, that black can deal with this. It might be natural to play a move like h6, simply stepping this pawn out of the way. But now this knight will come to e4, and things like knight takes e4, knight takes e4, are, aren't really what, what black is looking for here. Because this bishop's going to be a little bit awkward, you're going to have to move it back to e7 likely, uh, you're likely going to have to move it back to e7, it's not really what you want. So instead of h6, uh, black here came up with uh, what might be a better move in c5. And this is a very, very ambitious move. Uh, it allows white to capture h7 uh, either way. Uh, both are playable moves for, for white. It also leaves this b pawn behind, all for the sake of breaking in the center as fast as possible. And so here, Levon had to make a decision. There's really only two real moves here. That's bishop h7 or knight h7. Uh, in the game, Levon picked knight h7. Uh, just briefly, we'll look at bishop h7. The king will come to h8. And after f4, g6 is black's point, trying to trap this bishop. Uh, bishop takes g6, f takes g6 is a piece sacrifice. And you can imagine, knight takes b5, bishop b8, something like queen takes g6. And historically, this has turned out to be totally fine for, for black. Uh, the couple times it's been tried in, in, in practical play here. And so, while this is another interesting line, Levon, in the game, chose knight h7. And now, uh, black plays a very, very interesting move. He doesn't worry about this rook on f8, which isn't really going to be contributing to this attack that he's launching by opening up these bishops. So he leaves the rook uh, in take and plays rook or knight g4 instead. Obviously, hitting this h2 pawn, it's a sore spot for white. So white plays f4, trying to prevent uh, black from using these bishops effectively. Uh, black plays the very natural move, c takes d4, e takes d4, opening up the rook uh, in full view of the queen. And then this is where uh, uh, Anand really starts playing some, some crazy chess here. Uh, you need some way to continue this attack. You've given up this pawn on h7, you've kind of invited the white pieces into your home, into your, your king's side here, and so you need to play very, very actively. And so if you want to, at home, try and find the only move for black to play for an advantage here, uh, you can pause the video here. Uh, I will be very, very surprised and very impressed if anybody actually does manage to find this move who hasn't seen the game before. Uh, that move is bishop c5. And this move is crazy. Uh, obviously, you're just putting your bishop on a square where it can be captured. The point is, if it isn't captured, uh, this bishop is going to be eyeing this d4 pawn and indirectly this king. But, okay, what happens if we capture it? Well, after a long and complicated tactical line where both players are taking 
a ton of pieces, we can imagine knight c5, hits this bishop, and also creates a threat of queen d4. Let's say white captures this rook, we could give this check, and after king h1, we could take this bishop, and now we're looking to play knight f2. h3 is white's best move, knight df2 check, forces white to sacrifice this exchange, with rook takes f2, and after knight takes f2 check, king h2, this is the point of h3, and king takes f8, we can see at the end of the day, uh, material has actually been balanced, but black has a huge lead in activity and development here, with this bishop on c1 and rook on a1 both sitting out of the game. Uh, that being said, maybe this line was, was the best that white could actually hope for. Uh, going back though, uh, Aronian made the judgment call that he could not capture this bishop on c5 because that position does look rather uncomfortable for white. Instead, he chose this move, bishop e2, which would be a pretty good move if not for Anand's next move. So once again, at home, if you want to try to find the best move here for black, uh, I will award you three gold stars if you manage to find this move. It's, it's, uh, it, it's a very, very, very nice one. So I encourage you to try. Uh, but I wish you the best of luck, okay? The answer is knight d e5. Uh, this is the move for black that seals the deal. Uh, so, in the past two moves, we saw Nand play bishop c5, where the bishop can be taken, and now knight e5, where the knight can be taken, taken in two different manners. So what's the point this time? Well, the easy one is what happens if you take this knight. Either way, queen takes d4 check, king h1, and then we've all seen this one before. Knight f2, checkmate. Uh, but what happens if you take the bishop? Well, the answer is still queen d4 check, and if king h1, we'll play knight f2 check, uh, forcing rook takes f2, if king g1, obviously it's the same story. So rook f2, and now after queen f2, we're simply giving checkmate on the g2 square by force. No way to stop it. So, with that in mind, Anand puts both of his pieces right in front of the white pawns, but neither can be captured. So, uh, Aronian plays the best move, bishop takes g4, trying to trade off one of these knights at least. But now, uh, Anand can solve his problems, play the move bishop takes d4 check, uh, removing this bishop from capture, and after king h1, knight takes g4. We are making a lot of the same threats with knight f2 as beforehand, and none of our pieces can be captured. Besides, of course, this rook, which white does, in fact, choose to take. And now, uh, because Anand is one of the best chess players of all time, he didn't capture this knight back. I think I would. I think most people would. Instead, though, he plays this move f5. Uh, and the point to f5 is that after king f8, Anand probably didn't want to let this queen get into h7, thought it was, you know, just causing too many problems. It prevents my queen from coming out to h4. Why would I allow that? Who needs this knight anyways? Simply f5, blocking this queen from entering the game. Uh, Aronian chose knight g6, trying to keep an eye on this h4 square, but after queen f6, this knight is going to die. We see h3, Aronian tries to take this knight in return for this knight, but no such luck. After queen g6, you cannot capture here due to checkmate, so instead we see queen e2. And now after queen h5, we see queen d3, and I'll let you try to find the final move of this game, uh, that forced resignation from Levon Aronian. Okay, final move of the game. Can you do it? Hopefully you could. The move is bishop e3. Uh, of course, the point being, if you capture this bishop, queen takes h3, takes advantage of a pin, and queen h2 or g2 are both checkmate. So bishop e3, no good way to deal with this queen takes h3 threat. So Levon Aronian resigned. Uh, once again, a very impressive game from Viswanathan Anand, perhaps his best of all time. Uh, it's been called Anand's immortal game, and it's a very, very fun one to see. Uh, all of these place pieces being placed where they can be captured, and all of these threats against the white king, culminating in a very nice move, bishop e3, uh, threatening an unstoppable checkmate. Uh, thank you very much for joining me in today's game review. My name is Caleb Denby, and I will see you in the next episode.